Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Today is our unit on sport or sports, and these, of course, are activities that people play when they、mm. play games against each other, usually for exercise and oftentimes for competition. And today we're talking about something called table tennis, which, of course, is also referred to as ping pong, which I think is a copyrighted term, or it was before. I don't know if you're supposed to capitalize it or not. Last time I looked it up in the dictionary, it seemed to say that you didn't need to capitalize ping pong, so I think it's okay. You can call it ping pong or table tennis. I actually grew up always calling it ping pong. I never said table tennis. Like the formal word for it. Yeah, and the、yeah. ping pong ball. You know, like、sure. go get the ping pong ball. We never called it table tennis growing up, but、uh, we're calling it table tennis officially here. Yep. We're going to talk about the history. I was telling Tom before we started recording that I honestly thought that ping pong or table tennis was invented by the Chinese because of the word ping pong. Hmm. Yeah, that would、no. be a logical assumption. Assumption there,、yeah. but it turns out that well, I don't know. It's not really true, but、uh, who knows? China's got such a long history; they may have it in there somewhere. Who knows? Yeah, but no.、uh, we'll find out <laughs> a little bit about the history of table tennis in today's lesson: table tennis, paddling in the waters of diplomacy. We'll find out what that's all about right now. So let's get to it. Let's listen to the entire contents of our lesson one time. Having just finished dinner, you're up for some light exercise. Your friend suggests a game of table tennis. While this may not be a popular option for you, it was certainly in fashion in Victorian England. The game, which was likely created by British officers stationed in India during the late 1800s, caught on as a trendy parlor game among Britain's well-off families. Before long, the game took the world by storm and even became an essential diplomatic tool. Table tennis began as an impromptu game in which players used books or cigar box lids as paddles. The ball was either a golf ball or a champagne cork, and the net was a few books arranged in a line on a table. After the turn of the century, game manufacturers began making expensive ping pong sets. Tournaments started popping up first in the UK and then in the US. Later, the game spread to China and became a hit among the communist forces in the Chinese Civil War. The Chinese affection for table tennis even contributed to a release of tension between the US and China during the Cold War. On April 6, 1971. The U.S. table tennis team was set up with an all-expenses-paid trip to visit China. The team first arrived in Hong Kong and then crossed the border into China. The event made them the first Americans to set foot in the country since the communist takeover of China in 1949. The event was applauded by Time magazine as the ping heard round the world, paving the way for President Richard Nixon's visit to and breakthrough with China. Although table tennis is no longer being used at the diplomacy table, it's still a favorite pastime around the world. Okay, guys, let's talk about table tennis, which is quite popular in this、uh, area of the world now. The title says table tennis, paddling in the waters of diplomacy. You know, if you play table tennis, you have a little ball. Which I call a ping pong ball. Yep. And you'll also play with a paddle. Those little paddles are what you hit the ball with. Paddling usually refers to being in a boat, like a canoe, a small canoe, and having an oar and paddling it that way, paddling through the water. But here we're paddling in the waters of diplomacy. Table tennis actually helps some countries, I don't know, get along better and develop a relationship. We'll talk about that as we go through the article. Yes, we will. And I should also mention that the word paddle is the word that they use in the U.S. I've heard British people refer to those things as bats, which、uh, sounded strange to me, but I guess that's what they call them there. And they're also referred to as rackets. I believe you'll hear that word as well. But in the U.S., we use the word paddle here. So since we're Americans, that's the word we will use. Now, here's the first paragraph. It says, "Having just finished dinner, you're up for." 
some light exercise. Okay, this is a certain scenario where you might be with a friend or something, or with family or something.、Mm. And of course, we all need to have dinner, and then we finish dinner, and then we usually want to think of something to do. Of course, nowadays everybody's on their phone after dinner. There's no question there what we're going to do. But in this case, maybe you're a little bit、uh, ac- active, you know, physically active, and、okay. you actually want to do something with your body. So you're up for some. Light exercise, and this phrase here to be up for something just means you're ready for it. You want to do that thing. You're looking forward to it. Another、uh, phrase we use sometimes is we'll say, "I'm game for something." G A M E. Oh, I'm game for some table tennis, which means you're interested and you're、uh, wanting to do it. So your friend says, "Hey, let's play a game of table tennis." While this may not be a popular option, option here means choice for you. It was certainly in fashion in Victorian England. Victorian England refers to a period of England's history when Queen Victoria was the queen, and it just refers to the attitudes, the values of the time, maybe even their clothes. They were a little bit.、Uh, Prudish, they were very upstanding, moral people. But it became fashionable in this period of England's history to play table tennis. Table tennis, yes, or as we oftentimes refer to it, ping pong. So again, it was in fashion. It was popular in Victorian England, and the game, which was likely created by British officers stationed in India during the late 1800s, caught on as a trendy parlor game among Britain's well-off families. Okay, now first of all, we've got some British officers. Remember, India was a colony or a possession of. Great Britain for a long time, and of course you have armies stationed there.、Mm-hmm. Or we have officers, British officers, generals, majors, colonels, or whatever. They were stationed there. That means they were actually positioned there or placed there by their government. Of course, Americans have、uh, troops stationed in lots of parts of the world. In Japan, for example, in Korea, there are soldiers stationed there. But here, the British officers were stationed in India. And they got kind of tired of sitting around eating curry and stuff like that, and <laughs> listening to sitar music. And they decided, hmm, we need something exciting. Let's invent some kind of indoor game. Now, this took place in the late 1800s, which might be like 1890 or maybe 1880. So late in the 1800s, and this caught on. It says as a trendy parlor game. Among Britain's well-off families, if you're well-off, you are wealthy. You have plenty of money for your needs. Trendy means very fashionable, popular at the time. And parlor game. I should probably explain what this means. If you're playing a parlor game, you're playing a type of game that can be played, for example, in your living room or your family room. You don't have to go outside. That usually includes things like chess or cards, or maybe a board game like Monopoly. Okay, or you could be playing pool, billiards, snooker, things like that. Those would be considered parlor games. If something's trendy, it's very popular. It's very chic. It's very Very hip, and these are well-off families, rich people, basically with nothing better to do. They had their afternoon tea already, and they were bored too, so they wanted to play some kind of parlor game. Hey, let's play table tennis! And before long, the game took the world by storm. Before long just means it didn't take much time. Very、mm-hmm. soon, if something is taken by storm, that means it becomes popular really fast. So it took the world by storm. It became popular very quickly all over the world, and it even became an essential diplomatic. Tool essential just means very, very important, or very, very useful for something. You need to have that thing, or else you can't have something else. Essential, essential proteins or essential amino acids, for example, in your diet. Diplomatic means having to do with diplomacy, relations between nations, or as we like to say, international relations is all about diplomacy. Now, table tennis began as an impromptu game. If something's impromptu, it has 
happens without a lot of planning. It's sort of spontaneous. You could also use that word. Began as a spontaneous game in which players used books or cigar box lids as paddles. Back in the day, I don't know. Maybe they still have cigar boxes that look like the cigar boxes we used for our... putting cigars in. No, <laughs> when we were、uh, elementary school kids, we had these little boxes that you could open up and put your pens and pencils. I think they were cigar boxes.、Uh, cigars were smoked in the past more often.、Oh, they aren't、yeah. so much anymore. Inside、so、the house. So if、yeah. your father had cigars and he smoked them all, then you would have this box that you could store things in. You could put marbles in there、uh -huh. or other kinds of knickknacks. Yeah, they'd even usually have a cigar after dinner. It was kind of a popular after dinner treat, not for the women. Only for the men back then. If you were a woman and you smoked a cigar, they kind of looked down on you as being a little bit—I、uh, don't know—someone who didn't have a lot of high-class manners. So anyway, they would use these cigar box lids, pull them off the box, and use them as paddles. So they kind of just, I you know, came up with the tools they needed on the spot. Now the ball was either a golf ball. Wow, those really go far if you hit them, or a champagne cork. A champagne cork is that little piece of cork that's put into a champagne bottle, or I think even a wine bottle. Correct,、yep. Tom? I don't、mm -hmm. drink, and、mm -hmm. you have to take them off, take them out, and then champagne will kind of spurt everywhere. If you shake it, if you first, shake it, there's a、like、lot of like the、bubbles. winners of、uh, Grand Prix races. Always shake the champagne. They always do. Yeah. Then you pop the cork,、Boop. and then the champagne comes out, and you spray it on each other and stuff like that. This is cork, of course, which in Chinese is、uh, ruan mu, I believe, some kind of soft wood. It's usually from Spain, actually. And then they would use a net、uh, with books. They would arrange the books in a line on the table, and that would be the net for <laughs> the ping pong table. That's <laughs> how they did it. Back in the day, but things have improved a lot since then. We're going to talk about that in just a second now. But right now, we're going to take a break and listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 我们今天要来看的是跟桌球有相关的话题。首先来看到第一个空格的句子里面提到 ，While this may not be a popular option for you, it was certainly blank one in Victorian England. 在这里的 this 呢，指的就是 a game of table tennis。也许呢，现在打桌球不是一个很流行的选项，但是在这个英国维多利亚的时期呢，却是怎么样？那么现在不流行。然而，当时可是非常的流行，所以根据文艺第一题，我们可以选择 C 选项的 In Fashion。而这种运动呢，其实是在西元一八零零年代所由这个印度的军官所创而成的。我们来看到，在句子前面刚刚已经做了说明，而主词是 The Game， 中间是一个补充说明的。这样子的一个子句，那么接着是搭配主词后面的动词空格二 ，as a trendy parlor game among Britain's well-off families， 在当时呢，可是一些英国的富裕人家的家庭当中，一个这样子时髦的室内游戏。刚刚说到，根据这里的句型结构，第二个空格要放的是一个动词，而过去式又可以搭配。文艺的，我们可以选择 J 选项的 caught on， 也就是有变得流行、风行开来的意思。接着第三个空格 ，table tennis began as an impromptu game in blank three. Players used books or cigar box lids as paddles. 当时刚开始呢，只是一种即兴的一个比赛，而在比赛当中呢，这些球员会使用书或者是雪茄的盖子来当做是球拍。在这里，第三个空格我们要填的是 B 选项的 which。In which, 也就代表的是 in the game， 在这样的比赛当中来叙述比赛的方式。接着后面句子提到 ，the ball was either a golf ball or a champagne cork. 
and the net was a few books blank four in a line on the table. 当时使用的球是高尔夫球，或者是呢香槟的瓶塞，而网子则是用几本书呢把它排成一条线。在这里，书被排成一条线，要用被动式的。F 选项 arranged 则是有排列，被排列成为桌上的一条线，就当做了这个球网来使用。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, everybody. Let's resume our lesson again. We're talking about table tennis, or ping pong, as it is known colloquially. So again, we've got this game beginning in India during the late 1800s. We've got some British officers there. They're kind of bored there. It's kind of hot, so they want to play indoors, and they make up this game. It spreads to England, becomes popular there during Victorian times, and then it spreads throughout the world. And again, as we said, they used、uh, cigar box lids as paddles or books, and then the books would be the net, and they would use either a golf ball or a champagne cork as the ball. Now, after the turn of the century, after 1899 became 1900,、mm-hmm. about what 15 years or so before World War One started. Yeah. Then you've got something happening. Game manufacturers began making expensive ping pong sets. Okay, so the game caught. On so of course you've got、uh, companies getting involved. Also they changed the ball. I think some British diplomat went to the U.S. or something and found a. A ping pong ball there、uh-huh. that was used for something else, and、yeah. he decided to use it for this game. And now you've got these companies making these ping pong sets. The set would include all the equipment: the table, the net, the paddles, and the balls. Okay, so that's、uh, how the equipment started getting manufactured. Since then, tournaments started popping up or just suddenly appearing. First in the UK and then in the US, a tournament is a series of contests or competitions between a number of competitors, and they eventually compete for the first prize or the grand prize. Someone wins at the end of all these smaller games or smaller contests, so they begin popping up, and later. The game spread to China. So first, you saw these tournaments in the UK and then in the US, and later the game spread or moved to China and became a hit among the communist forces in the Chinese Civil War. Most of the kids listening, most of the people listening, know about the Chinese Civil War, and it was a hit among the communist forces or those who were following Mao Zedong. Right, and of course, it was popular during the Chinese Civil War, which took place basically right after the end of World War II.、Yeah. And of course, the losers were the KMT, and they came over here to Taiwan. And of course, you all know that history pretty well.、Yeah. So the communists there, the commies, the Reds, they were playing ping pong there when they were fighting the Chinese Civil War. They got sick of killing people, and they thought, "Hey, let's go play some ping pong. That'll be a little bit of fun. We can have some Gaoliang or some Shaoxing Joe, and have a great." <laughs> Time <laughs> while we're playing some ping pong,、yeah. and the Chinese affection for table tennis even contributed to a release of tension between the U.S. and China during the Cold War. Now, remember the Cold War that was mainly between the U.S. and Russia, but it was also between the U.S. and China because they were communist, and the Americans didn't like the communists, and the communists didn't like the Americans、mm-hmm. either. But、uh, they didn't really fight. They didn't really shoot each other. They didn't really missile or、uh, fight. Fire missiles at each other. Drop bombs on each other. Yeah, they weren't really fighting, so it wasn't a hot war. It was a cold war. They didn't like each other, but at least they weren't killing each other. But、uh, hey, this also became a form of release of tension. It、uh, contributed to this release of tension. To contribute means to offer something to someone else as a way of helping them.、Uh, you can contribute money to a charity, for example. But this helped to release that tension. Tension, of course, is kind of nervousness. People are not relaxed with each other. They just don't know what to do with each other. Well, on April sixth, nineteen seventy-one, the U.S. table tennis team was set up or formed 
with an all expenses paid trip to visit China. You'll often see all expenses paid put together with the use of these hyphens between words, and it becomes an adjective. All expenses paid, which means those that were on the trip didn't have to pay for anything. They had their plane tickets paid for, their meals paid for, their hotels paid for, and they got to go visit China. Well. The team first arrived in Hong Kong and then crossed the border into China. So that's the U.S. table tennis team. How they made their way from the U.S. into China was through Hong Kong, and they crossed that border there. A border is an imaginary line that divides two countries, or in terms of the United States, it could be the border between two states, which is sort of it's not drawn in the ground anywhere. There's not a wall. It's usually just well known where one country stops and one starts. Yep, there's a pretty long border between the U.S. and Canada. Another long one between the U.S. and Mexico. But、uh, here in Taiwan, you don't really have borders、no. because it's an island. Although you probably have borders between the city districts and the county Counties, districts、yeah. and all that kind of stuff.、Mm -hmm. But、uh, here, of course, Hong Kong was a colony of Great Britain at the time. So crossing from Hong Kong to China was a pretty big deal back then. It was just、uh, after the Cultural. Revolution and all that、mm -hmm. kind of stuff. There wasn't much contact between the West and China, and the event made them the first Americans to set foot in the country since the communist takeover of China in 1949. So the commies took over in 1949. Mao Zedong was the leader there until his death in 19 what 75 or so, or was that Chiang Kai Shek? I can't remember. Their deaths were kind of around the same time, but in any case, the Chinese takeover or the communist takeover take over. Here, as the noun, just refers to when government is taken over by a certain party. It could、yeah. be a takeover of a company, for example, when one company takes over another company. It was a hostile takeover. They took over the company, and the other company really didn't have any choice in the matter. Now the event was applauded by a very famous magazine in the U.S. called Time Magazine, and this quote that you see right after Time Magazine is what they wrote about the event. So if you applaud something, you show approval, or you praise something, and typically that is shown by clapping your hands. That's some applause, applause, and usually if you're watching a show, particularly maybe a Broadway show or a concert, you go to a concert and you like what you hear, you applaud. So the event was applauded or praised by Time Magazine. It's actually kind of a variation of a very famous quote,、uh, "The shot heard round the world,"、uh, which refers to what, Tom? Actually, the beginning of the Revolutionary War in the United States,、yeah. when the colonies decided to、uh, have a revolutionary war against Britain and become independent. Then we've got the USA, a really powerful country. So then it was referred to as the shot heard round the world. Nobody knows who fired that first shot、yeah. at Lexington and Concord there, but it doesn't really matter. The war began. Eventually, the Americans won.、Uh, that's a pretty long history lesson. But、uh, we're kind of changing this to the ping. I guess a ping could be considered. Considered some kind of sound word. Well, it makes a sound when you hit that ping pong ball. Crack. Ping. Crack. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And、uh, this paved the way, or made the preparations, made it possible for Tricky Dick, Richard Nixon, so he could visit. And this was a breakthrough with China. Again, they were fighting a Cold War there, and everybody talks about that trip Nixon made to China back、mm -hmm. in '72. It changed things for the future. China would not be what it is today if it weren't for Nixon's visit. Yeah, it opened them up to some、uh, progress. Well, although table tennis is no longer being used at the diplomacy table. It's still a favorite pastime around the world. A pastime is something you do with your free time that you enjoy. For example, it might be hiking, it might be baseball, it might be reading. We have lots of different kinds of pastimes. Right now, guys, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher. 
接着我们来看第五个空格的句子。Tournaments started blank five first in the UK and then in the US. 这时候就开始有锦标赛的出现了。首先呢是在英国，接着在美国也可以看得到。在这里后面有提到许多的锦标赛搭配文艺。第五题我们可以选择 G 选项的 popping up。Pop up, 也就是有出现，或者是如雨后春笋一般的出现。第六个空格 ，the Chinese affection for table tennis even contributed to a n blank six of tension between the U.S. and China during the Cold War. 在冷战的时期呢，中国人对桌球的热爱，甚至呢，成为了一个促进和平、来解除两国之间呢紧张关系的一个重要因素。第六个空格，我们可以选择 H 选项的 release， 在这里当做名词，有释放跟解放，所以搭配文艺。第六题选择 H 选项的 release。第七个空格 ，The team first arrived in Hong Kong and then blank seven the border into China。这支美国的队伍呢，是由香港抵达，接着怎么样边境进入中国？当然就是跨越边境。第七题选择 E 选项的 crossed， 有跨越的意思。第八个空格 ，The event made them the first Americans to set foot in the country. Blank aid the communist takeover of China in 1949. 而这支队伍呢，也就是第一批从这个一九四九年共产党接收了中国之后，是第一批踏上这个国家的美国人。在这里前后呢，我们可以选择用 D 选项的 since， 代表着是自从从那个时候开始，算是第一批。踏入中国的美国人。第九个空格的句子很长，它的主词是 the event。这样子的事件呢，当然受到大家很大的赞赏。然后紧接着，逗号后面空格第九个后面提到 ，for President Richard Nixon's visit to and breakthrough with China。这样子的事件呢，也造成尼克森总统他呢有机会可以到中国来参访，同时。时呢，跟中国的关系也进一步的有了突破。而第九个空格，我们可以选择 A 选项的 paving the way。当我们讲到为什么铺路的时候，就可以使用这个片语 pave the way for。第十个空格。Although table tennis is no longer being used at the diplomacy table, it's still a favorite blank ten around the world. 当然，现在在外交的桌面上已经不再使用桌球了。不过，它依旧呢是一项令世界都喜爱的什么呢？在这里，我们需要放一个名词，我们可以选择 I 选项的 pastime， 也就有消遣娱乐的意思。Okay, 以上就是今天的课文讲解。谢谢收听。That is it for today. Thank you all for joining us. It's been a pleasure to have you with us today. And of course, as you know, once table tennis became popular in China, the Chinese took it over, and now nobody can beat them. Well, that brings us to the end of our lesson again. Thank you for joining us, and make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.